Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. All right, we want to start God. right now. Wherever you are, uh, get your family member. It's time for Bible study tonight. And um, Robinson, if you are there, we are ready. But if not, brush your own. Yes, sir. Uncle okay. Wilson is online, sir. Brad Wilson, are you online? Yes. All right, I'm we online. are live. So, Brad Wilson. Good evening, everybody. Once again, you are welcome. This is time for Bible study, and we want to thank God for your life. You are all welcome to another exciting time in the presence of God as we learn at his feet. Jesus said, come and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my body is alive. So tonight, I trust God that it's going to be a wonderful time in the presence of God. So get ready as we come into his presence. I want to bring our, our brother who is going to be leading us tonight, Brother Wilson, by the grace of God. So Brother Wilson, over to you as he ushers us into the presence of God with prayers this evening. Over to you, Brother Wilson. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Uh, thank you, everybody who is online and tonight for, for the word of God. We welcome you online tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's to the move worship, please. Adonai, we worship we you. Worship you. Son of God. Son of oh, God, Almighty God, God, you are to be. To be. Almighty, Almighty God, God I'll be, be your name. Your name, your dominion, dominion, dominion is forevermore. Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. We were Son of God, oh, you, are so good. you are so good. You are so good. Oh, my King oh, 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 God, I love you. Your dominion is forevermore. Is forevermore. Adonai, we worship you, we worship you, I Dominion is forevermore. Amen. 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 Let's begin to appreciate the name of God. What a wonderful God we worship. Just begin yes, to Lord. appreciate Him. Just begin to praise Him. We give you praise, O oh God. Worthy of our Thank praise. You, Bless His holy Thank name. You, Lord. Our Lord, our God, Lord. we praise you, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory, Lord. The I am that I am, the Lord of hosts, the Alpha and the Omega, the immortal Redeemer, we give yes. you glory. We praise you. Open your mouth, brethren, and let's begin to appreciate this wonderful God. Let's begin to worship him. Worship him for who he is. Just give him glory for his might. He is worthy of Every oh, yeah. word from us tonight, yeah, he is praise. worthy to be praised. Oh, yeah, he God, is Jesus. worthy, Your worthy yeah, all Lord, to be lifted high. Yes, the most holy one, the lion of the tribe. Thank of you, Lord. Jesus. The Alpha and the Omega, the Lord. 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 The finish. He is everything. He doesn't seek the permission of your Thank you, Jesus. enemies Thank you, to do what he is doing in our lives. Thank Can't you, just Jesus. begin to worship him. Just begin to worship him. Glorify his holy name. 
Father, we give you glory. The governor among nations. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. The only righteous. We give you the Father. The Lord of hosts. The mighty one, the lion of the tribe of Judah, we yes, give you praise. We, worship you. Yes, Father. we bless your name tonight. Yes, Father. We give you, praise. We give you glory and honor and adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord God. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen. Still in that attitude, let's begin to thank him. You know, let's begin to honor him. Think of what he has done in your life, in my life, in the life of everybody on this platform. Learn to thank him, honor him. Just say, Father, we're doing in our midst. I thank you, every member on this platform. Just open your mouth and appreciate him for that. Thank he you. is worthy for all. You, Just say, Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank we you, thank you for what thank you for what you are still to do in the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. Thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. To you be glory and honor. Amen. Just thank God for the protection. He has protected us. Just what's happening around the world. What is doing? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We worship you. Thank you for divine protection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is not am I. It is not because we are better than people who are done. We are not better. We yes. are not better. There are people who are alive because of his. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We call the honor, we call the glory and all the adoration. Father, bless them for your message and your forever. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory and all the adoration. Bless them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Thank Lord, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, brother, we'll say we lost you. I think your internet is, we, we're having a problem with your internet. Brother, we can't hear you. Yeah, brother, brother, we'll say your internet connection is low. So you're Hello? going in now. Oh, hallelujah. Hello? Yeah, we okay. You can get me yeah. down? Yeah, it yes. said your network bandwidth is low. It was low. So oh. that's why you're fading now. But uh, is it okay now? Um, yes. Just, yes, just round up the prayer and um, the praise team should come on. Okay, Thank you. so let's begin to, let's uh, commit uh, the, the servant of God who is going to be, uh, who's going to be teaching us tonight unto him. Let's just commit the vessel that the Lord is going to use tonight. Let's pray that the Lord will anoint him big time in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father Lord, we commit the, the, the vessel unto you tonight, Lord Jesus. We commit, oh Lord Jesus, may you begin to touch him. May you anoint him, Lord. May you speak through him, oh Lord Jesus. That your word should come tonight with power, oh Lord Jesus. Power to heal, power to bless, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father Lord, make him, Lord God, that which you will use tonight, oh Lord Jesus. Amen. Speak through him unto your people, oh Lord Jesus. As many as they've gathered today, Lord, visit them, oh Lord Jesus. Let your yes, word, Lord. oh Lord Jesus, give them that solution, oh Lord God. As your word come tonight, we pray, oh Lord Jesus, whatever they've come tonight carrying, oh Lord Jesus, let them go back relieved in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray, oh merciful God, even those of our members, oh Lord, who are not here tonight, we pray, oh Lord Jesus, as we gather tonight, as your word comes forth tonight, Lord, let it come with a solution to them, O oh Lord God, that they will Amen. be touched, that their lives will be changed, O oh Lord God, that Amen. at the end of the day, O oh Lord, we give glory unto you, Father 
name of Jesus. Father, we also pray, oh Lord, for every equipment, oh Lord, that we'll be using tonight. Yes, oh Lord. Lord. Every member who will be singing, the choir, whoever, oh Lord, we pray that, Lord Jesus, you will anoint them tonight in the name of Jesus. We sanctify every equipment, oh Lord Jesus. The yes, airwaves we cover with the blood of Jesus. Lord Let's begin to cover Jesus. everything with the blood of Jesus. Lord we cover of ourselves Jesus. with the blood of Jesus. Everything, oh Lord Jesus, the airway, we soak it with the yes, blood of Lord. Jesus. Every member, oh Lord, we cover them with the blood of Jesus, Lord, Lord God. Jesus. As we get into this meeting tonight, Lord God, yes, Lord. you will speak to us, oh Lord, on an individual level, Lord God. We will not live on this platform the same way we join it in the name Amen. of Jesus. That Lord, by the time we end this meeting, oh Lord God, each Amen. and everyone will be blessed yes, by your Lord. word in the name of Jesus. Amen. That your word, as it comes Amen. out today, Lord, will fulfill the yes, mission we send it out today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we show Amen. everything with the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. We give you all the glory, all, all the, the glory, honor all the in glory. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, merciful God. Thank you, Lord. In the midst of your people, Lord Jesus. We Amen. give you glory and honor, O oh Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. We start this meeting in the name of God, the Father, Amen. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to be the presence of the Lord God. Amen. Tonight we're going to worship him. We're going to praise his name. Amen. Like we've never done before. Um, I want us to all do something tonight. Uh, if you are not in a loud environment and you are able to unmute yourself, I want you to unmute yourself and just sing a song unto the Lord. Whatever song of praise that comes to your mind, just sing it unto the Lord. I don't want you to just worship God through my songs only. You know, sometimes there is always a song in your heart that you all sing to God when you appreciate him. I want you to do that tonight. Just, if you're not able to sing, just keep saying, thank you, God. Uncle said earlier when he was praying, he's the reason why we are not consumed. So let's just give him all the glory. We give you glory, Lord. We honor you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. How wonderful you yes, are, God. You are wonderful. You are body. You are wonderful. You are worthy, you Lord. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Um, I want to quickly read uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For yes, this is the will of God for yes. you in yes, Christ. Amen. Amen. And also Amen. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23 says, It is because of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not consumed. Because yes, tender compassion never fails. And 23 says, They are new every morning. Great Amen. beyond measure is God's faithfulness. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Living Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, before you go on, um, I think I don't know whether it's my internet or okay, uh, yours is showing that we have uh, the bandwidth is low. I uh, check your shots, and I, I think that was a message sent to you. And okay, then sir. after the prayer, then Sister Boss said, take over. All right, no problem, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. So tonight, I want us to prepare ourselves, to get ourselves ready to receive from the Lord. Because the Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Not just Amen. half empty, not just half full. There is fullness of joy. And we are currently in the presence of God, wherever we are right now. I pray that the Spirit of God will take absolute control in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let us just keep praising God. Let's keep praising Him. Let's glorify Him. Let's glorify His holy name as we welcome Sister Bosse to lead praise and worship tonight. Welcome Him into your home. Welcome into your presence. Give Him all the glory. Give Him all the honor. 
give him all adoration. God is good. Father, we bless you. We Thank lift you. you up. We bless your holy name. Father, as we worship you this evening, Father, accept our praise in Jesus' mighty name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Father, be with us in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Over Hallelujah. To you, Thank you, Brashim. Thank you, Brashim. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Um, I hope, I just want us to remember during these times when things seem like and maybe out of control, that God is the one that has the final say, and his power Amen. is the one that surpasses all power. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Make way through the water, walk me through the fire. Do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life. And do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Make way through the water. Walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life, and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah, he's roaring with power, fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Make way through the waters. Walk me through the fire. Do what you are famous for. What you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions. Bring dry bones to life. And do what you are famous for. What you are famous for. Make way through the waters. Walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dragons to life, and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm the raging sea lives in us. Lives in us. He lives in us. Lives in us. There is power in the name of Jesus.
Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us. Thank you, thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you, Stabose. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Without wasting much of our time tonight, we we want to um, go into the Bible study for um, this week. And God has prepared a servant of God to teach us and to bring us a word. But before we quickly uh, bring our teacher on, I need one or two people to remind me what we did last week. Uh, you remember what did we what we did last week? Who can just remind me of the topic uh, we had last week? Uh, very interesting. Uh, let's do that quickly. What what was the thing that we taught last week? And I I believe that somebody was blessed last week. I'm blessed. I don't know about you. So I need I need. So it's an open book. Go back and open your book. Honoring and respecting constituted authority. Thank you, bro. Bona. Honoring and respecting constituted authority. authority. And part of the thing we talked about, uh, we talked about one of the way to also honor authority is to also perform our civic duty. And then so election is around the corner. It's going to mm. be next week, Tuesday. We are not here to tell you who you should vote for. But like mm. we said, somebody asks, if you know somebody out of the candidate, if the candidates are wicked or evil or bad, and you have three candidates, somebody asks, which of the three candidates should you choose? And uh, people like Sister Christine gave us word of wisdom. and uh, We should go ahead and choose the lesser evil of the three. So this time around, don't don't use your human knowledge of wisdom just check by the spirit pray and let the lord lead you to vote for the right person because your vote counts your vote is very very important so the, the way, whichever way you vote and it is always said whichever way goes the leader also goes the nation so we are counting on those of you who are watching us live those of you who have the right to vote, please go out there and vote. Oh. And let's vote in prayerfully 
putting the right person in the office so that the nation of America will be great and continue to be great and that the will of God will reign in this land and the, and the counsel of the Lord shall be done and the Lord will bless us in Jesus name. So uh, without wasting time, I want to bring our minister for tonight. Let's welcome with clap offering and Jesus our silicone shout offering for brother Ake as Woo! is the minister to us tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome, brethren. Welcome, brethren. Good evening. Hallelujah. Welcome. Um, yeah, just as Pastor has said, I mean, um, I just want us to, you know, take stock. Today is the 28th day of uh, October. It will be November in a few days. Mm. I just want us to, you know, take, Pastor, we have any minutes do I have? Uh, you have one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, one hour, yeah, one hour, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So I want us to take stock for as you know where we were at the beginning of this year let's us i want us to thank god for january february march mm. april may june july august september october very soon november and and december let us you know sing this song and thank you know god for his mercies which endure forever because it is by only his mercies that, yes. that we're able to stand God, you are so good. Yeah. Blessed be, be your be name. name. God, you are so good. Blessed, Blessed be, be your, your name. name. In heaven, you, you are the Lord. On earth, you reign forever. Oh God, our praise our Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. One more time. God, you are so good. Blessed be your name. God, you are so good. Oh, yeah. Blessed be your name. In heaven, heaven you are the Lord. Oh, yeah. On earth, you reign forever. You reign. Oh, oh God, I'll be the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Amen. Heavenly Father, Amen. I give you all, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, we give you all the adoration. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that tonight, Lord, you will open our eyes. Open our eyes according to the order of Elisha. Father, Lord, help us to see, understand, yes, and Lord. comprehend the supernatural. Father, Lord, tonight, Lord, open our ears according to the order of Samuel. Let us Amen. hear you and hear your word clearly. Father, do not let us hear the voice of, of, the, of the enemy. Mm. Father, Lord, let your word, let it bear fruit in our lives. Amen. Multiple fold in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, tonight, I pray, Lord, that as a, result, as a result of this study, Father, Lord, that we will not be the same again in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Father, damage our ignorance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, that by the time we share the grace here tonight, Lord, let us know that we came and we met you. Amen. Father, Lord, glorify yourself in tonight's study. Glorify your son and glorify Amen. your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So, brethren, tonight, amen. We're actually on study 11. We've actually done study 10, which was um, a church with a difference, non-conformity to the world. We did this a while back. So, we're going to skip this and uh, go straight to study 10, uh, 11, which is on page 82, 80, 82 of your books. Do you have, I, 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 pre, I believe everyone has a copy of the book. Yep. Amen. Amen. So, and our anchor, anchor scripture is uh, Romans 8, 1 to 15. Romans 8, 1 to 15. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to read. I'll read pretty quickly um, our anchor scripture. We had it. If you have it, please read, read along with me. If not, uh, just listen along. And uh, permit your indulgence. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Romans 8, 1 to 15. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 2, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, for what the law could not do, 
in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity with, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God that mm. no indeed can be. Verse 8, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but those who, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, mm. he is not his. Verse 10, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, mm. these are sons of God. Mm. And verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. May the Lord Amen. bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're looking at um, steps to victory over sin in Christ. Steps to victory over sin in Christ. And um, the author, Reginald Wallace, once said, the triumphant Christian, I quote, uh, does not fight for victory. He celebrates a victory already won. He celebrates a victory already won. And if we remember... When Christ was about to give up the ghost, he said on the cross, he says, it is finished. It is finished. That is literally, it is finished. It is finished. And, um, you know, this is one of the, the, the basis by which as Christians, you know, we, we actually celebrate a victory that, you know, Christ already won for us. Now, many believers desire victory over sin, and they are constantly wondering why sin seems to have a grip on them. Even when the scripture tells us in Romans 6.14 that, we are no longer under the law, but under grace. We are no longer under the law, but under grace. And this is interactive. And uh, please, I encourage you, you know, ask questions. So what does it, let me, I'm going to ask a question of us. What does it mean in, when, in Romans 6, 14, that we are not under the law, but under grace? I, I, I open, I throw it open. What does it mean? Anyone? Please feel free to, to speak up. What does it mean when we say we are not under law, but under grace? Yes, sir. Um, actually, let me read that same uh, verse in a different right. version. It yes. says, for sin will no longer be a master over you. Yes, sir. Since you are no longer under law as yes, slaves, yes, but sir. under unmerited grace as mm. recipients of God's favor and mercy. Yes, sir. So because of God's favor and mercy, we are no longer slaves to sin. God, yes, uh, Jesus Christ died for us on the cross of Calvary. And yes, once we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and continue to live in him and he in us, then we are no longer slaves to sin. But if someone just say, oh, because I was born or baptized yesterday uh, mm -hmm. for the rest of my life, whatever sin I commit is covered. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe that's true. Uh, we need to actually let Jesus Christ and God remain in us and then us in, in God. Amen. 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 Anyone else? What does it mean to not be under the law, but under grace? Anyone Praise else? The Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So, after the law, when you commit sin, the focus after that is judgment and punishment. And under grace, the focus from God, it's not um, judgment. It is mm. repentance. That's why mm -hmm. grace comes first instead mm -hmm. of judgment. So yes. when we are under the law, whatever happens or whatever thing we do that is sin, the next thing is punishment. Yes, but sir. under grace, before God, the first thing he will look for is our repentance and through the blood of 
forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. So you see, the, the, from what we're saying, the context of this passage basically is that is that the spiritual conditions of those who are saved, those who are, you know, and who are those who are saved? These are those who have expressed, you know, saving faith in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, not, but I, brethren, this does not apply to the whole human race. Can someone please read Romans 5 1 for us? Romans 5 1. Romans 5 1. An evangelist. Romans 5 1. Sorry, Uncle Aki, I just wanted to contribute before that Bible verse because what you said was exactly what I was thinking. You yeah. know, it's, you know, to say that we no longer, we're no longer uh, subject to the law. It doesn't, mm -hmm. like you said, it doesn't apply to everybody. Yep. You can, you can follow the letter of the law, the literally, law. you know, the law of the land, even, but if you're not, if you haven't accepted Christ, if you haven't come under the umbrella of that grace, yep. you cannot enjoy that grace. You cannot benefit from it. So exactly. I just wanted to make that point too. Yeah, thank you, my sister. Exactly. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Romans 5.1. Yes, sir. It says, therefore, since we have been justified, that is, acquitted of sin, declared mm -hmm. blameless before God by faith, let mm -hmm. us grasp the fact that we have peace with God and the joy of reconciliation with him through our Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the mm -hmm. Messiah, the anointed. Yeah, amen. Amen. So you see... If you have not accepted, like my sister was saying, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, then you cannot be justified by faith. And as a result, you have no peace, you know, uh, with God, you know, because this peace comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to believe that, that everyone on this uh, Zoom call has at some point given their life to Christ. If you haven't, you know, we can, we can definitely... Uh, talk about this, you know, um, in, when we conclude to today's meeting. Now, the other thing about, you know, not living under the love of grace is that we should not allow sin to tell you what to do. You know, we shouldn't allow sin to tell us what to do because we are no longer uh, under the authority of sin in our lives. And, you know, those, and once you have given your life to Christ, you know, those, you know, um, who haven't given their lives to Christ, you know, they, like my sister was saying, who's a legal expert, you ask, and, you know, st the people who haven't given their lives to Christ, standing on their own merits, you know, apart from God alone, are compelled to sin. So if you don't, you know, if you're not in Christ, you are compelled to sin. There's no, you know, there's no way you can escape it because the Bible says that we were slaves to sin. We were slaves to sin. And, you know, we're not... Uh, so, but, you know, by the time we give our lives to Christ, we're no longer under sin because, you know, we're not under the law. And in the same sense, you know, being under the law actually reveals to us how powerless we are against our own, you know, desires to sin. And we'll see, you know, very soon this evening. You know, we are under God's grace. And because of God's grace, we are no longer compelled to sin. And, I mean, Romans 7, 5 puts it like this. Um, you know, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Now, what does it mean by motions of sin and bringing forth fruit unto death? Can anyone, anyone? What, what, what does that mean to you? I, I'll tell you what it means to me in a minute. But the, what, what does, you know, I'll read, let me read again, Romans 7, 5. It says, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which we were, which were by the law, did work our members to bring forth fruit unto death. What does it mean to you? I'll tell you what it means to me. Does anyone? That is the motions of sin and bringing forth fruit unto death. There's a scripture that comes to light for me, and I'll explain. But does any, I want to give people the opportunity to, to you know, prefer their own meanings of, of Romans 7, 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did walk our members to bring forth fruit unto death. What does it mean? Anyone? Anyone? This is this is interactive. Don't make me speak alone, please. <laughs> Anyone? And I, you all know the answer to this question I'm asking. I'm sure because by the time I, I give you my answer, you it'll be it will become clear. Anyway. If, if for the sake of time, can someone please read James 1.15? James 
an evangelist in the house, if you can read James 1.15. We'll see the motions of sin and it yes, bringing sir. forth fruit on James, James 1.15. Then when the illicit desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin has run its course, it gives birth to death. Amen. 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 I, let me permit me to read the uh, uh, New King James. It says, "Then when lust, lust, another another word for lust is desire. When lust or desire hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and when it is finished, it brings forth death." This is what um, um, uh, Romans seven five is talking about. Amen. Mm. So, in fact. Uh, you know, the power of sin is aroused by the existence of the law and the Adamic nature within us, as in Romans 7, 5. So instead of the law helping to stop sin, it actually stimulates what it's meant to prohibit. That is, natural as the forbidden fruit always appears desirable. The forbidden fruit. How many times have you thought about, uh, let, us, let me give an example, you know, um, like something you're not supposed to do, you know, like, you know, uh, maybe some, you know, some food is bad for you, but you know, you're like, you desire it. You're like, you okay, out. Okay, I'll just eat a slice of that cake. You know, you you know, you have a problem with sugar, you know, but you see the cake and you can't resist the cake. You're like, okay, I'll just eat half a slice, not you know, not a full full slice. Amen. Amen. Proverbs nine seventeen it says it affirms that stolen waters always appears to be sweeter. Mm. You know how, how how and so you know how do we over, overcome sin? You know sometimes. You know, I may be, you know, so I'm sure at some point everybody would have been faced with this uh, situation where, you know, I'll, I'll give you a very good example. When you are young, you know, you would, you know, your mom cooks you in the kitchen, you know, and, um, you know, you're like, ah, let me, you know, go and steal one piece of the meat in the, in the pot. You know, you take the meat in the, nobody's looking at you, you know, you, 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 you know, you go to the kitchen, you take the pot and you quickly shake the pot and, you know, um, you know, uh, try to cover up your misdeeds, but uh, guess what? Our mothers are very sharp. They can tell when uh, people, you know, go into their, their pots. Amen? Amen? So so Proverbs says, affirms that, you know, stolen water, they appear to be sweeter, but uh, when, uh, when, 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 when your mother catches up with you, you you'll enjoy yourself as, as I did when I was a child. Amen? Now, what are the secrets of victory over sin? What are the secrets of victory over sin? And you know, we have uh, you know, our book tells us of, of about four secrets, and we're going to go into detail. The first one is your identity in Christ. Your identity in Christ. Your identity in Christ. And we have Galatians two nineteen uh, to twenty three nineteen to twenty nine and uh five uh one to sixteen well we, you know please take note and read in your own time we won't go into into them for the sake of time so before we come to christ we were we are dead in sins and walk in our loss and passions of this world but the moment we receive christ we are made dead we are made dead to the world and alive to god can someone please read galatians 2 10 and somebody else prepare to read Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. Galatians 2, 20. Galatians 2, 20. Galatians 2, 20. Yes, sir. Galatians 2, 20. He says, Yes, sir. I have been crucified with Christ. Yes, that sir. is, in him I have shared his crucif crucifixion. It yes, is sir. no longer I who live, but yes. Christ lives Christ. in me. The yes. life I have now in the body I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God, Amen. who loved me and gave himself up for me. Amen. Amen. So we, amen. So we see that, yes, we, we, we are dead you know, to the world and we become alive in Christ. Amen? amen. Now, at salvation... A change takes place and a new power is induced in the believer to live victoriously in Christ. And we'll get into details in, in, in a few minutes. Can, uh, can someone read Ephesians 5.8 for us? Ephesians 5.8. At salvation, a change, something miraculous happens at salvation. And we're going to go into detail tonight. Ephesians 5.8. Yes, sir. Ephesians 5.8. It says... For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. 
Walk as children of light. Live as those who are native born to the light. Amen. 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 And, and someone, uh, can, can someone else read Romans 8, 8 to 9? Romans 8, 8 to 9. Yes, sir. Romans 8, 8 to 9. And those who are in flesh, living a life that caters to sinful appetite and impulses, cannot please God. Amen. However, you are not living in the flesh, controlled Amen. by the sinful nature, but in the spirit. Amen. If, in fact, the spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. But Amen. if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. Amen. Amen. So we see that, you know, uh, at salvation, there's a transformation that uh, it's a transformation that takes place. That is, you know, we, we, trans, we are transformed from darkness into light. A new power is, is introduced to the induced in the believer to live a life that is victorious in Christ. Amen. So therefore, you know, your victory in Christ starts with your identification with Christ. Like Sister Bisi was saying, if you don't identify with Christ, if you don't, you know, appropriate his, his, his dying for us, if you don't accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, then, um, you know, you, you, you cannot start, um, you know, living a life, a victorious life. Amen. For believers to be victorious in Christ, their consciousness must be broken. Their consciousness must be broken and the Christ consciousness must be awakened. That is, we must walk in the light of who we are in Christ Jesus. This is the first step to victory over sin. Amen. Amen. Step two basically is re so once you have once you know that your your identity in Christ, the next thing is th that comes is self realization of who you are in Christ. Self realization of who you are in Christ. Second Corinthians five seventeen says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Behold, all things. The Bible is, is, is pretty clear. It doesn't say, you know, one thing, two things, three things, four things are become new. It says, oh, you know, like brother, I remember brother, Bo brother Boris has a song he used to sing. I can't remember the song. It's all, it's all the bad, bad things I used to do. Mm, I do you know, that I no more. Like, I do them no more. So the Bible is, is saying that, yeah, all old things, the bad things you used to do, they have gone away and behold, uh, all uh, new things have come. Then, amen. Also, you know, the, our re realization of identity in Christ, we are, we are God's child. We realize we are God's child. As in John 1, 12, we realize that we, are, if we have become a friend of Jesus. Amen. We are holy and we are accepted by God, as in Romans 5, 1. We are united with the Lord and one in spirit with him. And this is one I like uh, very much in particular. We are bought with a price and therefore God's property. We are bought with a price and therefore God's property. Can someone please read 1 Corinthians 6, 20? 1 Corinthians 6, 20. We are bought with a price and therefore God's property. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 20. 6, 20. Yes, ma'am. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify Amen. God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. And, and, and while you're there, can you read first uh, Colossians 1 14? Yes, let me see. Colossians 1 14? Yes, 1 1 14. If I get it, that should be it, yes. Okay. Colossians 1 14. In yes. whom we have redemption through his blood, Blessed. even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. I, I, permit me to read another version here. It says, his son paid the price to free us, which means that our sins are forgiven. He paid the price in full. He paid the price in full. What does it mean that Christ paid the price in full? What does it mean to you or to, 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 to me that Christ paid? And what, what are the implications of Christ paying the price in full in practical terms? What does it mean, Christ paying the price in full? I'll tell you what it means to me. Anyone, what does it mean that Christ paid this price in full? Anyone? Um, I think to me, uh, what it means is that, I, I guess it's easier said than, than done, but mm. 
all that is left for us is just to submit. Amen. All that is left for us is just to accept. Like he's done it all. He's Amen. given it all. Amen. All that is left to us is just to receive that, accept that, and submit completely to him. Amen. 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 I, 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 that is that is so so true, and and in addition to that, what it means to me, and I think it should resonate with you, is if you know in your mind that Jesus Christ has paid the price in full, then you have become a joint here with Christ, you know, of the Father. In, and if you remember, the Bible says that um, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. What it means, therefore, is that you have the right to say to Satan, Satan, leave me alone. Get away. Don't disturb me. Or you can talk to you know, any affliction or any sickness. You have the right and the power to say to such things, you know, to, to not bother. Because if you remember Christ paid the price in full, you have become a joint heir with Christ. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places at the right hand of God, far above principalities and powers. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. And, and the next thing is we, we, are, we have become a member of God's family. Bragan, um, before you go on, that Colossians 1.14 that you talked about, yes, uh, I actually want to read it in the Passion Translation, and I think this is, uh, you, it portrays what you are trying to say. Yes, sir. It says yes, sir. in uh, the Passion Translation, it says, For in the Son, yes. all our sins are counted. All, all. All mm -hmm. our sins, the sin is in plural form, are cancelled. Mm. We have the release of redemption yes, through sir. very blood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's 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 a very good that's a very good translation. So all everything, everything you have done, the ones you are going to do, you know, God forgive us. You know, all mm -hmm. everything has been paid for in full. So you don't have to live yeah. your life in fear again. If mm -hmm. you sin and you fall. Just quickly repent and reappropriate the blood and don't let the devil hold your mind in captivity. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 And then we've also I have a question, please. I have yes. a question, please. Yes. So can can we say that um by that can we also say that we have a pre free pass um for sin not to have uh for the law not to have a hold over us again? That is the law of sin not to have a hold over us again. We have a free pass by of God, not. Jesus paying the price. Of course, of course, of course. That would be foolishness. Of course not. I mean, <laughs> that, shall we shall we sin that grace may abound? I mean, no. am I might paraphrasing now, yep. you know. We cannot continue with sin that, you know, grace may abound. No, because guess what? As we all know, grace can run out. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and another thing I'd I like to add, uh, Bracky, uh, yes. to that question is that this is one of the reasons why sometimes we as pastors, we find it difficult to really, really want to uh, preach this issue of grace and what grace. we are talking about, the new creation mm -hmm. reality. Because yes, we sir. need to understand the principle of the new creation reality. Yes, that is the reality in Christ. Yes, sir. Your sin, like Brother Key said, your sin in the past, your sin in the presence, wow, your wow, sin wow, in the future... Wow. Is already cancelled. Is already paid for. Fully. But here is the caveat: you do not have the liberty to continue in mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Now the Bible says in First John chapter three. Uh, if somebody can quickly open that for us, that he who is born of God, God does not continue in continue. sin. Mm -hmm. For the, so First Corinthians chapter three verse eight. Uh, if you can find that, let's read. He said, "For the seed of God is in him." Mm. So another translation says, "He who is born of God does not make not a me. practice." Somebody read that scripture for us. First John chapter three verse eight. Okay, let's read King James version and any oh, other version. Oh, I have the New Living Translation. Go ahead and read. Amen. But when people keep when people keep on sinning, it shows they belong to the devil. Okay, so has... the, did you hear that? So yeah, the reality is this: the blood has cancelled our sin. That's what they say, yeah. If the blood has cancelled my sin, I have the power to live a righteous life. Amen. If I now said that, uh -uh, the blood has cancelled my sin, we have to I'm continue. Yeah, yeah. Is that busy? Read it again. What did he say? <laughs> it shows they belong to the devil. Anybody who is doing that. 
And I know Stabumi is not asking that question because of herself. He's asking it because no. this is the this is reality in the body of Christ. And this is the reality in the new generation and church and those who preach grace to the extreme left. Mm. Say now that we have been forgiven, we can do anything. He said, mm -hmm. the scripture say, if you now begin to continue in sin, it shows that you belong to the devil. Satan is your father. Forgive. <laughs> that busy. I'm not the one. Read it again. Let them hear. <laughs> <laughs> but when people keep on sinning, it shows they belong to the devil. Yeah. Mm. Who has been sinning since the beginning? Mercy. But the Son of God came to destroy these works of the devil. Hallelujah. So the purpose. Amen. So in, in, in the so like Brother King said, the new creation reality is that even is is telling you that not only is your sin cancelled, you now have the power, power. not to mm -hmm. continue to sin again. Does it mean you are not going to sin? No. Sin oh, is going to come. Mistake is going to come. But you don't make a practice. Mm -hmm. You don't okay. consistently, consciously begin to mm -hmm. live in sin. Instinct. The Passion Translation says, but the one who indulges in a sinful life is of the devil. devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Oh, the beginning. The reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Do we understand that? And for Amen. the benefit of young Christians who are watching us, in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature. You have a new life of God in you. But you don't say, because my sin in the past, in the present, in the future, I've been forgiven. I want to continue to live in sin. No, Bracken, like our teacher said to us, there is no pass, free pass for that. No, 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 no. Okay. Over to you, Bracken. Thank you. Hey, and I'm, I, I, I was, I'm going to get into more details in a few minutes. Yeah. Amen. So, and then we are also complete Bracky, in Christ. Bracky. Yes, sir. Sorry. Let me just read um, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. The grace of God has appeared that offers salvation. Mm. All mm. Yes, sir. 12 says, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness. Amen. Mm. Worldly passion, just you know, to buttress what Pastor told us. Mm. Yes, sir. True grace is that that compels you yes. not to sin. Not to so, sin. So, yeah. if the grace that anybody is um, looking onto or holding onto, it's the kind of free pass to sin, then that is not true grace. So, the mm. true grace compels you. It teaches you. It helps you to say no. To iniquity, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Now, the the third secret uh, to victory over sin is that you are dead, as we have just said, we are dead to sins. We are dead to sins. As oh, in Roman... you did not finish you. You jump. Oh. You 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 stop at um. You've been bought with a price. Yeah. You oh, uh, a member of God's family. A saint. That, I mean, that's where you are. Yeah. Yeah, we're saint. Okay. Yeah. And then we are we are adopted and have direct access to God. We are now we now have direct access to God. Amen. You have somebody raising hand in the chat room, Bracken. Yes. Go ahead. Bracken, go ahead. Bracken, go ahead, sir. If it says if our sins have been forgiven, why then do we need to ask for forgiveness again? Can we just <laughs> repent and move on? <laughs> <laughs> but <I> should... <laughs> he says, if our sins have been forgiven, why then do we need to ask for forgiveness? Amen. But we, we have to confess. He says, confess ye your sins. You have to confess. You can't just, uh, you know, say, you know, you, we assume that, you, yes, we have been forgiven, but you need to do the actual act of confessing you know your your sins amen but, but, but bracken um brother tunde's question sounded like president trump's um um issue yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, president yeah. trump said he does not confess anything he does anything. not have anything to repent have anything. Well, so what what do you say to that because uh, because it's a true question some people like you rightly say well if our sin has been forgiven do i need to confess it why should i confess uh, yeah. I need to move on because it, it sounds funny, but I'm going to be honest with you. That question is very, very important because when I was pastoring in Nigeria, I met a, a group of Christians from a Korean church. Mm. And one of the things they 
teaches is that once you are born again, you don't need to confess your sin. And mm. I've also had some other, some churches in our country, mega, mega churches, known, mm. I won't mention their name, they also have quoted that First John chapter 1, verse 7 is not for believers. Mm. That is for unbelievers. So, Bracken, what do you say about that? What does the scripture say? And why do we have to confess our sins? Amen. Now, the, the, I mean, for me, the, the reason for me, I mean, as to why it is important for me is about being, re, I mean, it's about reconciliation mm. to Christ. I've offended somebody. I need to admit, you know, uh, my transgression. My error. I, yes, sir. My error. Yes, sir. And I have to speak it to God, you know, the, to, to God, my father. That is what it is about, you know. Uh, and, and you know, in Matthew 18 15, it says, If your brother sins against you, go mm. and tell him, his, tell him his fault mm -hmm. between you and him alone. Mm. So, it, 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 if, if, if the Bible is telling me to go and you know, uh, talk to my brother, him and him alone, I mean, it becomes clear that we need to talk to God, our Father, and say, Father, it is me again. I've come, I've sinned against you, Father, forgive me. Amen. That, Amen. that is. That is that is the importance to me. So, can yeah, I, about, you, can, I, can yeah. I? Yeah, go ahead, Sabumi. Yeah, go ahead. So, if confessing our sin is um, owning up to our mistakes, yeah, yeah. and not just yeah. bearing it. If yes. you don't confess your sin, it's like tantamount to being proud. Exactly. Like, okay, exactly. I did it. I did it. Okay, so what, what can you do? Get a yeah. big deal. Yeah. So, like Pastor would say, there's no big deal. So you have to confess your sin to show that you are actually remorseful mm. of what it is that we have done. And Amen. without that, there's no contrite spirit in us. I'm sorry to say. Thank you. <laughs> Sister, are you telepathic? You took the words right out of me. <laughs> sorry, sir. Yeah, for, you know, what, is, what, is, what does it mean to be contrite? To, you know, it means it's a feeling to express, express remorse or penitence. Which means you have to speak it. You can't just exactly. think it in your head and think, oh, yeah, you know, but you must speak it. Amen. I hope and, that and I also, uh, before you go on, Bracken, let me bra um, uh, thank you, Bracken, for asking that question. But let's let's bring scripture to this. First John chapter 1, verse 7 to 9. Amen. First John chapter, first John chapter 1, verse 7 to 9. Amen. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, right. we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ is son cleanses us from all sin. Now, this is where many people we quote and said, you don't need to confess your sin because mm -hmm. verse 7 says, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all our sin. They are going to tell you that that scripture, that verse is in the present uh, continuous tense. Mm -hmm. In other words, the blood cleansed, the blood is cleansing, and the blood is going to clean. Mm -hmm. Now, which is the truth from what our teacher said earlier on. But now look at the verse 8 and 9. And nine. Mm -hmm. He said that we have no sin. no sin. We deceive ourselves and no. the truth is not in us. Not this not. scripture is talking to the believer because people we want to, and I, I want to bring a little bit of theology in here because uh, people who want to confuse you will tell you that the word sin here is written as S-I-N, not S-I-N-X. It will tell you that S-I-N is the original sin that John is talking about. So if John is talking about the original sin and not talking about the product of sins mm -hmm. and the effect of sin, which is S-I-N-S, -S, then here is what it says in verse 9. If we confess our sins, yeah. you see, you will never have sin, S-I-N-S, -S, without S-I-N. S-I-N yeah. is the mother. He gave birth to sin, the original sin that you inherited from Adam. So that was why King David said, in iniquity, I was conceived. In iniquity, I was born. The power of iniquity make me to commit sin. Paul said, I will not have known what it means not to steal, except the Lord told me no. not to steal. He said, what the Lord was supposed to do, the Lord was supposed to help me not to sin, you but the Lord me. quickened in me sin, the ability to commit the sin. So John is saying to you and I, if we now confess, so because the reason why we sin was because the original sin nature is there. And that is what's the first thing Jesus came to destroy. And Jesus knew that as long as you and I, we are still in this uh, uh, um, 
in this flesh we are going to sin we are going to commit iniquity and he said if we confess our sin is faithful and just to forgive our to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all and all righteousness he now said in verse 10 if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us so how many of us on this platform or those of you watching me that you can say today uh, uh we have how many more minutes or uh, hours to to round up the whole 24 hours that you will say that you have not committed anything impossible. today impossible because i know one of the things that we are going to say oh okay i think i'm holy today i have not committed fornication adultery i have not lied i have not killed i have mm. not stolen mm. but how about when the holy spirit said unto you be quiet don't mm. talk mm. and you keep on talking mm. it's sin for bible say all unrighteousness yes. is what is sin so in the new testament we establish go to that first john chapter two Look at what he said, verse 1 and 2. 1 John chapter 2. My little children, this thing write unto you, that ye sin not. Mm. And if any man... So John was not writing to unbeliever, contrary to the teaching of some people. The epistle of John were to believers, those who are born again. This born teaching again. is to you and I who are born again. The person who is not born again, the first thing you need to do is to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, accept him as his Lord and personal Savior. He's a sinner by birth. He's a sinner by nature. Is a condemned criminal, so he cannot confess sin. The first thing he need to come out of is the original sin. But now it. John is writing to us, eh? my little children, this thing write I unto you that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, yeah. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Verse 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, not S I N. Is the propitiation for the original sin, but because it's the propitiation for the original sin, the power of the blood cleanses us from every sins that we are going to commit. And like we said, we don't make liberty to continue to sin, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And I'm going to say something to you. This is where somebody like Bishop Carlton Pelsin got it wrong. Because mm. Carlton Pearson said mm. this is the gospel of inclusion. That the blood of Jesus has died for the gay, has died for the unbeliever, mm. for the murderer. So they don't need to commit, confess any sin. Because they are now included, he said, but also for the sins of the whole world. For the sins of the whole world, yes, Jesus died for the whole world. But it's like you, you have one million dollars in your bank account. And you are going about suffering you don't have money you are hungry until you go and acknowledge that oh there is somebody telling you, you have one million dollar in your account but you don't believe it and you are going to die in your poverty but if they tell you that you have one million dollars in your account you believe it you take a step to assess it then you come out of your poverty this is what happened in the issue of sin jesus paid the propitiation for the sins of the whole world the gay inclusive, the lesbian, everybody, murderer, I'm everybody. But you, that it is not a free pass. You have to come to accept that number one, I am a sinner. Exactly. Number two, you have to accept that Jesus died for you as your Lord and personal Savior. Yeah. Number three, you confess that sin. Number four, you now confess him and make him Lord of your life and ask his Holy Spirit to come into you and you turn a new leaf. Mm -hmm. You can't continue to live in sin. Like Sister Bumi was asking before, you can't say because your sin has been forgiven. No, you must you must acknowledge it, come out of it, and then you'll be saved. The last thing I will say before I hand over back to Bracken, Psalm 32, verse 5. I want you to see this, Psalm 32. Even King David, before redemption, he understood this. Psalm 32, verse 5. What did he say? Somebody read for me. Two different translations. I, I, I have it. Uh, the uh, King James, Bra, Sheun, Sister Christine. Psalm 32, verse 5. Verse 5. What Finally, translation are you reading? A new living translation. Sir. New living. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Finally, I confessed all my sins to Finally, you. Finally, I confessed all my sins. Some of my sins? No. All. How many? All. All. all my so, sins when you, you see, unbelievers cannot confess all their sins because they don't know all the sins they are committing. Mm. It's mm. only a believer that knows the sin that they are committing. Mm. When you lie, you know you have lied. When you mm. exaggerate, you know you have exaggerated. Mm. When you stole, you know you have stolen. Mm. 
Yeah. An unbeliever is a sinner, is a is a bloody sinner. Let's call it like that. So he doesn't even know. Yeah, he doesn't know that I'm doing something bad. But you are the you and I are the only one that the Holy Ghost will convict us okay. and say, bro, the way you look at that sister is not good though. Not good though. It's not good though. Unbeliever will look and say, no big deal in looking. <laughs> but you you will look. In fact, you will wink at somebody. And you know, don't, don't, and in 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 book in book three of the early church series of developing godly character, the book three title is spiritual detoxification and renewal. Mm. In spirit, in, in that book, there's a chapter in it called Deliverance from Self Iniquity. Mm. And part of the deliverance from self iniquity is that there are certain hidden sin that you don't know that is there, that is inside of you. A situation that will reveal them. Mm. Part of them is fantasy. Mm. There is none of us here that will say we don't have fantasy. That's something you fantasize about. And if God should give you some of those fantasies, they will destroy you. Mm. And I give you an instance. Look at Adonijah, the, junior, the senior brother of Solomon. Oh, After they gave the throne to Solomon, he went and met the mother of Solomon, Beersheba, and said, Mommy, my grandma, you know that the throne belongs to me. Mm. But, but you see, as God, we have it. And the will of the Lord is that my brother Solomon should have the throne. The mother said, that's true. He said, but I want to ask you for a request. Help me ask my brother Solomon for something. The mother said what? He said the young girl, that small girl, they give a uh, daddy before daddy died, Abishag, and tell Solomon to give me the girl. Since he has the throne, let me have the girl. Have the girl. And Solomon's mom went to me, Solomon, and said, and your brother, Adonijah, he said you should give him Abishag. And then since you have the throne. And Solomon said to his mother, why are you asking for Abishag? You should have also asked for the throne for him. He said, for this that my brother have asked, his head will be cut off from his head because asking for a bishag is more or less like trying to take over the wife of the king. Oh, yeah. So I, I came up with a conclusion these days. There are some things your flesh want. Mm. There are some things your body crave. It's better for you for your mouth not to say it out. Mm. It can lead to death. Mm. It, didn't, it didn't lost. So King David said, I acknowledge all my sins. Stabi, see, read that again. Finally, I confess I confessed all my sins to you mm. and stopped trying to hide them. Mm. I stopped I trying said, to hide them. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, uh, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. I will confess my rebellion unto the Lord. Mm. Go on. And you and you forgave me. All you see, my guilt is gone. All my what? Guilt is guilt. Gone. So one of the reasons why you do confession, and I think, and this is why I like the Roman Catholic Church, because the Roman Catholic Church makes sure that every Sunday you go to Mass, you make confession. And I'll tell you 10 reasons why you must confess your sin. Number one, confession is good for the soul. Number two, confession makes guilt to go away. Number three, your heart is, the burden is lighted. Somebody says, is it enough to confess our sin to one another or to God? For example, oh, spouse God. to spouse or father. Brother, can we answer that? <laughs> <laughs> because that me, I will tell you, number one, there are some things that you should just confess to Jesus first. If yeah. Jesus not tell you, go and confess to you. Because sometimes mommy will tell me, uh, on the I say, well, Jesus will your misery. Jesus will be your misery. But the first person you confess to, is the Holy Spirit, is to God. And then when you confess to God, then take it from there. But confession is good for the soul. And also, honestly, it gets to a point that God will ask you to confess to your spouse. Jokes apart now. Honestly, mm. because it's part of the healing process. Mm. It's part of, honestly, because you don't want to carry any weight. But be careful. If God did not lead you, let the Holy Spirit lead you. I'm begging you. Mm. I know what I'm talking about, too. Before you cause World War III. Uh -huh. uh, there, there is a... There's a pastor somewhere in Philadelphia here in America um, that uh, he did something and uh, he has settled it with God many years and his wife told him, you need to come out to the church and tell them and confess it. And uh, the wife was pushing him. The wife pushing, pushing, pushing. So the man and the wife, the wife said, oh, need, today is the day you are going to do the confession. As soon as the man said the thing, he, the, the shame and the, and the whole reproach, the man had cardiac arrest and he died on the spot. Yeah, I yeah, died on the spot. So ask the Holy Spirit first. Mm -hmm. You can come and confess to the elders of the church. And if the Holy Spirit say that the elders should bring you to the congregation, fine, we will do the congregation. 
because there are some things we just do over righteousness. You understand? So, and somebody we said, uh, because I've had uh, bad pastors, we say the Bible say confess your sin to one another. Uh, not, to one not another not that is saying there, he's talking about the leadership. It's not to everybody. So, when you confess your sin, it's good for you. Your body is, the, the, the shame, the guilt is lifted. Your heart is lighted. Like Sister Bumi said, you, it shows that you have a contrite heart. It's a sign of humility. God is able to quickly identify with you. The devil has nothing against you. The devil has nothing against you. Even you yourself, you are free. And you know that you are the son of God. And you are happy for it, I'm telling you. And that is a power to move on into higher righteousness in Christ. Everyone confessing. You know, one of my friends was telling, I don't know whether it was Pastor Akin or Pastor Kosh was telling me this morning when we were talking. He said, he said, anything that is shrouded in secrecy, he said, it's evil. Anything you cannot say to people or to God uh, means that it's evil. Back over to you. Yes, sir. Amen. So, yeah, as I was saying, we have become a member of God's family. We are saints and we have. Uh, we are adopted and have direct, like Pastor B was saying, we have direct access to God, and we are also complete in Christ. Amen. So, now, Brad, I want to I want to throw something a little thing to you, especially yes, if it, when he said we are saying. So, on this platform, everybody, release your camera. Let me see your face. How many of you know that you are a saint? How many of you believe that you are a saint? Bring your camera on. Let's see. How many saints do I have? Do you think you are a saint? Uh -huh. <laughs> are, are you a saint or you are a sinner? <laughs> Bracky, develop a teaching on that for me. Saint yes, or sir. sinner? What are you? Are what are you? you? Bring your camera. How many? Are you a saint, Bratunde, or a sinner? Brad, uh, the rest of you, you are not bringing your camera. Are you afraid whether you don't know whether you are a saint or a sinner? What are you? Uh, is is um. If, if I'm allowed to talk, sir, go ahead, uh, talk. Go ahead, sir. I, I think it's a little it's a little hard to define in terms of uh, a saint or a sinner mm -hmm. because if you are a sinner, you are literally living in sin. Just mm -hmm. because you teach one day doesn't make you a teacher, right? Mm. And for someone to be considered a sinner, that means uh, that person is living in sin. So yeah. every time I go to God and ask for forgiveness of sin, I've been renewed. My, my my part in God has been renewed. So at that point, I'm no longer a sinner, right? What are so you? I can't, I can't really so call myself a sinner. Because <laughs> I'm a sinner. <laughs> okay, now, Bracky, I'm and catching some... I can't call myself a saint. I can't All video. right, okay. Uh, Brother Bona, are you a sinner or a saint? <laughs> Lucy, bring me, bring me and them. I like the way you're doing I want to know how many saints and sinners I have in this uh, church. I will not do... <laughs> To purify ourselves. But we have, you see, this is the reason why we are doing this study because you've got to come to the new creation reality. Yes, sir. So, bro, Bona, are we a saint or a sinner? You are muted. Bro, unmute yourself. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So I was a sinner, but in Christ, I'm a saint because. Thank you. Me Thank being. You. Thank you. And my behavior, it's me. I'm hid in Christ. And right. that's. The way God sees me. So when do you become a saint? When I denounce myself. My in sins. life or in death? Death. death. <laughs> Sister BC. Okay. When when do you become a saint? You see what I'm talking about? So this is this is this is the problem because the, the Roman Catholic Church has made us to believe that yes. until you die, you can you never be canonized yeah. as a saint. Oh. Mm. So, uh, are you a saint in life or in death? In life, sir. In, in life. life. In so, life. look at what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle, an apostle of, Jesus, of Christ, Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. These people are still living. They are not dead. not dead. The moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you are a saint, not yeah. until death. So tonight, I have sent Aki on the, in, in the house, sent Obona, sent Sheung, sent BC, sent Bosse, sent uh, Tunde, sent Bayo. Not until I die. 
People think that until they canonize you are like Mother Teresa, Saint Susie, before you become a saint. But you see, these saints must continue to live saintly. Amen. Amen. You understand? So this saint cannot say, now the blood of Jesus has made me a saint, and I want to continue to practice it. No, you cannot make a practice. So the truth is that the people in the Ephesian church, Paul addressed them as a saint, not because of what they have done, but because of what the blood of Jesus has done for them. And that is why it is very it is very important to live in the reality of this new creation and to walk in righteousness so that we don't lose our sainthood Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, bro. I came back to you. Amen. You know, I, I prayed a prayer when I started the teaching. I said, Lord, tonight, damage our ignorance. Amen. And it looks like God has expediently answered one of those Amen. prayers. Amen. So number three. The uh, amen. Excuse me, sir. I have a question. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we are all saints, why are we sinning again? <laughs> why? <laughs> because the Bible says all our righteousness is like a feeding rag. Yes. If we are talking about the saints, then mm. they don't sin. So why are we still sinning? Why are we asking for forgiveness every time when we are praying? Black, you want to answer that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, just in a, just you know, you know, very quickly, you know, on this side of eternity, yes, sir. While we are still in this flesh, mm. there is, you know, it is almost like Pastor Bayo was saying, we will, we will still make errors, we will make mistakes, you know, but we will not be bound to this sin, mm. you know, again. So Amen. until we cross over from this side of eternity, mm. it is it is almost virtually impossible not to sin in this world. But mm -hmm. you know, like like we know, you know, Jesus paid the price in full, past, mm. present, and future. Yes, but sir. Like the caveat is don't continue in sin. Sinning, in sin, that is the key thing. Yeah. So, but Sister we, Titi, let me also add to what Brother King have said. Yes, yeah, somebody want to say something? Yes, yeah. sir, Pastor. If I may, if yeah, I may go ahead, ma'am. Yes. Go ahead. So, and from the from the Bible passage, um, it didn't say if everybody in Ephesus was considered saint. Mm -hmm. So I believe there were some of them that were not saints. Mm. So I want to believe that even though um, some of us think we are saints, we still have to understand the fact that some people are not on the same level with everybody. Thank so, you. We still mm. have to confess our sins. Even Amen. though if you think you are a saint, mm -hmm. you have to still confess your sin for Thank the you. benefit of others at the Thank same you. time. Because uh, our righteousness, like you said, is like a filthy rag at the yeah. same time. So I, I love what Sister Dr. Dr. Choma wrote in the chat room. He said, we will still sin. However, intentional sin is what we need to create an awareness of. Because Sister, Sister Titi, let me tell you this. Here is the reality of the new creation. In Christ Jesus, the death of Christ makes you acceptable before God. Not, it's not your righteousness that makes you acceptable before God. I don't, no matter how much only you think you are living. you are no, See, whenever God looks down, the Bible says in Christ Jesus, it said now in Christ Jesus, you have been accepted into his beloved. So when I give my life to Jesus Christ and accept him as my Lord and personal Savior, I'm not perfect. I still have issues. I still have errors. I come before the throne room of grace and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus. So when the Father is looking down on me, it's not seen Pastor Bio. It's not seen Bio. He's looking at me through the blood of his son. So when I appear before the throne, I appear spotless. I appear without iniquity. The blood is the only thing that gives me access to appear before the throne room of God. Brother Aki asked a question in the beginning. He said, what is the difference between being under the law and under the grace? When you are under the law, you cannot come without you first making atonement for your sin. You are going to die. You can't enter into the holies of the holies. You will die. But in Christ Jesus, I have access into the holies of the holies through the blood. That was why when Jesus died on the cross... And he said on the cross, it is finished. Finish. The Bible said the veil that covered the holies of the holies was, was rent into two. 
it was not ran from up to down it was ran from bottom to up it has a meaning theologically why was it not ran from top to down because god already have access to us we are free <laughs> we have access to him so it was ran from bottom to up now by the flesh of jesus a new and living way is now made available to us so this is where the error is now in the church that i don't need to go to reverend father to confess my sin before my sin is forgiven i now have access directly by the blood of jesus to the throne room of god so every time you stand there sister titi jesus look at you and says saint titi has come but because of the sin consciousness in us we are being told that we are imperfect yes you are imperfect but every day you wake up and say father in jesus name you are not seen as a sinner you are seen as a saint not what you have done but the blood makes you a saint the blood makes you acceptable god sees you and the devil knows that you don't know that so he holds you captive and that is why in those days in our glican and orthodox church we come before god every sunday Baba, we, we, we say we your children we have come we are worthy we are sinner uh, forgive us all our sins and we keep praying that prayer every every week so and every day every sunday so that is driven into our consciousness to say that we are unworthy and that is why we don't have power to be able to fight the devil we don't have power to overcome sin because we have been made to believe that we are unworthy no in christ jesus i am made worthy in christ jesus you are made worthy in christ jesus your voice is uh, is heard in heaven now you have authority not because of what you have done that is why we said there is a place for positional holiness that is a place for experiential holiness so that is what dr joma was talking about you cannot intentionally continue to sin no mm -hmm. but if you find yourself in sin quickly take advantage of the blood and repent and get back into your sainthood because we think that a saint is the person who have died no you are saying why you are still living and like sister bumi said everybody in Ephesus, or you think they were not committing sin they were still committing sin that is why Paul said walk out your salvation with fear and trembling so the question is this what do you believe are you a saint or are you a sinner if you have a sinner's mentality you will never do anything you will never amount to anything in christ because satan is going to keep beating you down and say you are not worthy satan will tell you you can't do it uh, you that you accused somebody yesterday yes i i did and that is why we say confession father i'm sorry i'm not supposed to say what i've said forgive me and you receive your your, your forgiveness through the cleansing of the blood and you move on to ask what belongs to you amen amen amen, amen. back in so, back to yeah just to to add, <coughs> you know just to add to what you are saying uh to, to strategy basically you know we need to put on you know the right put on christ himself you know, Christ is like like Pastor B was saying. You know, it is not by anything we do that makes us righteous, but you know, but the righteousness of God Himself. So you know, we shouldn't. And then let me let me let me point out that that is Doctor Bin has have something for you as you continue. Finish what you are saying, and there's a there's a comment there. Yes, yeah, since we are still in the flesh and can see, that means that they are that those that are not in the flesh can be saints, Catholic saints. Yes, this is we're, yep. we're saying the same. We're saying the same. Yep. But I just wanted to um, remind us that the devil, this is the primary thing the devil uses against us. As mm. he, he will try to, to mess up our thinking that, um, you know, we, we're not righteous. You know, we are, you are, he will constantly remind you that you are a sinner, you. But, mm -hmm. you know, but we have to remind ourselves that, um, you know, it is by, by Christ, the righteousness of God, which the Bible tells us to put on. We can have access through the blood, like Pastor B was saying, to the throne room of God. Amen. Going back to, to our study, the third thing is that you are, as in the third thing in terms of secrets to victory over sin is that you are dead to sin. We have become mm -hmm. dead to sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55 verse 9, you know, says that, you know, as high as the heavens are, you know, God's ways are not our ways and mm -hmm. his thoughts are not ours. It says the, the laws of God and the ways of God do not operate in the same way with the laws yes, of God. the natural world. Amen. Amen. And in Romans 6, 6, you know, uh, the word of God also tells us that we are dead to sin. And that is what it is. We are, mm -hmm. we are just dead to sin, completely dead to it. And in Romans 6, 11, we don't feel dead, but we are dead to sin. So we're still, we're not dead as in mm. dead, but we are dead to sin itself. Amen. To the act of sinning. You, you mm. know, it doesn't move us anymore. We have, 
we are broken free from that that um, you know that uh, predisposition to committing sin. Yes, amen? sir. And we, we must walk in the consciousness of what Christ has done, nailing sin to the cross and making us alive to Himself. Can someone please read Colossians two fourteen? Colossians two fourteen. Colossians two fourteen. An evangelist. Colossians two fourteen. Just for emphasis. Colossians two fourteen. An evangelist in the house. Colossians two fourteen. Just for emphasis. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, King James Version now, that was yeah. against us, yeah. which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. To the cross, making us alive to himself. Amen. Mm. So we have to walk in the consciousness of Christ. Amen. Mm. And, and, and we must believe the word of God. We must believe the word of God. He Hebrews, let me read. Bracken. Yes, Before sir. you go on, I want to read it in the Living Bible Translation. Yes, I'm going to go ahead. Sir. Go it, ahead. It, it will buttress what you're saying. It yeah, says, yes. and blotted out the charges proved against you, Amen. the list of his commandment which you had not obeyed. He took this list of sin and destroyed it by nailing it to I his cross. On the cross. Amen. 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 So we see. We must believe the word of God, even if you are, your feeling doesn't match what the word of God says. Mm. It is not the same as denying your emotions, but rather agreeing with God. And how do we agree with God? How do we agree with God? How do we agree with God? I want to, I want to point us to Hebrews eleven six. Hebrews eleven six. It says, "But, but without faith." Mm. It is impossible to please to him. please God, Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, Amen. Amen. So we, we must, you know, we have to believe God, believe that he is who he is, and come to him in in faith. There's another scripture I'd like to 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 read to you to buttress, you know, uh, that that fact, and it is Ephesians six five. To, Five to eight, Ephesians six five to eight. He says, "Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, mm. doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men." Verse eight, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the mm. same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be born or free. Amen? Amen. So we see we must believe the word of God, you know, by, by living according to his word and pleasing God, pleasing God and, and him alone. Now, before we move on, I just wanted to ask, so we, we, it, 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 the third point says, you know, we are, we are dead to sin. So what are the, let me just ask this question. What are the characteristics of a spiritually dead man? What do we think are the characteristics of, of a spiritually dead man? Now, sin separates us uh, or cuts us off from, you know, from, from God, who is the source of life. Mm -hmm. And the separate, we know that the separation leads to de spiritual death. You know, um, the dead spirit, you know, manifest characteristics just the way in the same way as a dead body begins to decay the spiritually dead begins to manifest spiritual decay and corruption amen so what 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 are the characteristics of a spiritually dead man i i'll i'll, I'll give you some examples a spiritually dead man practices and derives pleasure from sin amen first john 1 5 to 6 says this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, like Pastor B was saying earlier, we lie and do not tell the truth. So the first characteristic of a, of a spiritually dead person is they practice and drive pleasure from sin. The second one that I found in my research was a spiritually dead man shares Satan's nature of pride, evil thoughts, and mm. wicked deeds and lying and lying. Amen. First mm -hmm. John 3 8 says, He that committed sin, like we were saying, Pastor B earlier, about you know, uh, continuing sin, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Amen. The third characteristic of a spiritually dead person is a spiritually dead man does not love. 
He hates. Rakin, hold on, Zach. Can you give us number two again? Number two. A spiritually dead man shares Satan's nature of pride. Pride, mm. pride. She Evil has... thoughts, wicked deeds, and lying. Amen. 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 And like I was saying, first John 3 8, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil seen it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifested mm. that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Yes. The third characteristics of the spiritually dead person. I'm not, the reason why I'm going through this is why, you know, the, the third point says you are dead to sin. Why, you know, mm. just to help us understand that you need to really die to sin. Amen. A spiritually dead man does not love. He hates, and if he tends to love, it is mm. self selfishness masquerading as love. First mm. John 2 9 says, He that sinned. He that said he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even up to now. So you cannot hate your brother. You know, otherwise you 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 know you 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 are actually you know um, aligning yourself with the devil. The fourth characteristics of a spiritually dead person is that a spiritually dead person is awaiting the second death. His name is not written in the book of life. Amen. His name. Is not written in the book of life. Amen. Revelation 20, 11, 15 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So a spiritually dead person is, you know, awaiting the second death. Now, we were talking about in uh, a few, in, in, the, in, the, in section two there, we talked about uh, what happens when you give your life to Christ? I just wanted to quickly, you know, um, explain to us what happens when we give our lives to Christ. Basically, the dead human spirit, the spiritually dead man, now has the opportunity of receiving a new life in Christ. And you know, once you receive that new life in Christ, we are now connected to everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ alone. John 3.3, 3, which the popular scripture, which we don't say, Jesus answered and said to him, very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Now, what the life, the life received at the time of being born again is like a candle. Amen? Are, are, are we together? Yeah. You know, which is, which, which is the human spirit. A man is not born again without light. His candle is, is, is like, you know, his candle fire is out. A candle without light is like a dead electric bulb, but it cannot give, and I'm sure most of us have replaced an electric bulb at some point in our lives. You know, um, you know it, it, it's like a, 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 a person without light is like a bulb without no filament. It's, it, it is dead or burnt, you know, it's like a shell. But when you accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal Savior, there's regeneration, mm -hmm. there's recreation, and there's remission, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, and the bulb, you know, is made to recover and shine again. Amen? Amen. So when anyone repents, which is, you know, why we we're talking about confession, when we repent of our sins and believe and agree with Jesus Christ, you know, he takes away our sins. We are redeemed from the spiritual death mm. and, and the attendant consequences of the, of, 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 of the precious blood of Jesus. Forgiveness. We, are, we, we get forgiveness. Now, when a new, and now going back to what we said about confession, when a believer confesses the Lordship of Jesus Christ, over his life and agrees that God raised Jesus from the dead, he is immediately reconnected to the Father and saved from satanic rule. Amen. Mm, amen. Why it is important. When you see, quickly confess your sin before Satan. We call, Satan is, we call him the great accuser. He will go and accuse you mm. before the Father and say, ah, uh, brother, can you remember? He, he, just, he, he just shouted or somebody just did something bad. And, you know, and because God is righteous, He's a righteous God. He, yeah. You know, he has to point, you know, he has to point you. But if you quickly confess your sins and appropriate the blood of Jesus, then Satan, you know, is is like just like Pastor B was saying, you have an advocate before the Father. Amen. Mm. Amen. So when mm. when we 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 now you know are reborn, we have we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, then the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit comes into a man at the point of new birth, and the spirit of the man becomes a, a residing place for the Holy Spirit, and from there in fellowships with the Spirit of God. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27 says, A new heart also will I give you, mm. a new spirit, a new spirit will I put within you, mm. and I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, mm. and I will give you 
a heart. I'll take away the stony heart of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will, verse 27, I'll put a, my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Amen. So we see that, that at, like I was saying earlier, when we, when we give our lives to Christ, there's a transformation that takes place. We go from darkness into light. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells with us and we, you know, we become children of God. Amen. 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 So the, moving on, the fourth thing, the fourth and final um, um, thing that gives us victory over uh, sin is that we are now alive in Christ. We are alive in Christ. Can someone please quickly read Romans 6, 4 to 5? Romans 6, 4 to 5. Romans 6, 4 to 5. An evangelist in the house. Romans 6, 4 to 5. Romans 6, 4 uh, to Romans 5. Romans 6, 4 to 5. Amen. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, Amen. that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory Amen. of the Father, even so Amen. we also should walk in newness of life. Verse 5. Amen. For if Amen. we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, Amen. we shall be also in the likeness Amen. of his resurrection. His resurrection. Amen. 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 So, so you see, we, we actually, you know, we died with him and we are resurrected with him. We have become alive with him. Amen. Amen. So as children of God in Christ, we identify with him in a number of ways. The first one is in his death. Um, as in Romans 6, 3 to 3 and 6, in Galatians 2, 20, Colossians 3, 1 to 3. In his burial, we also identify with him as in Romans 6, 4. In his resurrection, like we just read, in his ascension, in as in Ephesians 1, 19 to 20, and in his inheritance, Romans 8, 6 to 17. Let me read that for, for, um, for Ephesus. It's important. We, 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 we read that we, we have an inheritance in, mm. in Christ. Amen? Amen. But I read King James Version. It says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So we, we see we have an inheritance in Christ. Amen. And in, in conclusion. Before you, you know, conclude. Sir, yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Um, yes, go ahead, sir. About the, in various ways that we identify with Christ. Um, yes, sir. In this life, I can understand we identifying in his death when we yes. re and you know be become a new creation. Um, yes, I understand in burial. Um, I understand in resurrection, which yes, is sir. all the process of uh, repentance and being a new creation. But yes, I'm not sure how I can identify with him in ascension and inheritance in this lifetime. So is it something that we are anticipating will happen during rapture, or is it something that we can experience in this lifetime? That, 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 that's a good question. That is a good question. It, I mean, we, it, 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 the way I understand it is, it, it all, it, I mean, I see that something that is a promise of something that um, God has already promised and it's something that we hope for and anticipate for. You know, it, it, it is, it, it, God's words are year and year, you know, it, 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 is, it is a promise. So, so regardless of, I, I mean, regardless of what we are going through, you know, we died with Christ, we are buried with him, we are risen with him, we are resurrected with him, and we, are, and we have the assurance of, of, of um, his, the power of his resurrection and, and also to partake of, of, of an inheritance in him. Because it says that, you know, either as many as believe in, 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 in Jesus have, be, you know, become the right, they have the right to become the sons of God and are joint heirs mm. with Christ the Father. So we see we have, an, and if you are joint heirs, it means we have an inheritance in Christ. As I was saying earlier before, by the very nature of, of that of being joined here as we Christ, we have an inheritance, which means we are seated with Christ. We are seated in, with Christ in heavenly places at the right hand of God, far above principalities and powers. You know, this is our one of our, this is an inheritance we have by the very fact that you know we, we have come to believe in, in our Lord Jesus Christ. So right. it is something that we anticipate for, and we also experience now. 
in the sense that if you if you condition your mind to believe that yes i have an inheritance in christ i'm a joint heir with christ it means i am seated with christ in heavenly places far above mm -hmm. with spirits and powers i have the right to tell satan to back off amen here and now i have the right to tell satan to back off i have the right to decree certain things as in job 22 28 it says thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established so you have the authority the right to do to to because if you are joined here with christ then you know you have certain privileges and that's the way i see it i mean there are privileges now and there are privileges in the air after pastor b i don't know if you have any 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 other um, perspective on, on yes yeah, bracky you you yeah. said it and i think some uh, and i'm going to answer that somebody said what uh online on facebook uh somebody mm. said what about conscious and unconscious sin so both conscious and unconscious sin i'm coming back to you bro Buna. uh yeah. you we once you realize Okay, start. Okay, okay. Uh, Doctor Chema said, "I do not believe everybody would be dead before rapture." All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so once both conscious and unconscious sin, the God has made room for them for forgiveness mm. in between within the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. Once you are conscious of it and you know that what I have done is wrong, repent of it. Repent. If you do it unconsciously and the Holy Spirit come to remind you that, see what you have done, repent of it. Repent. So that mm. is part of your right through the blood of Jesus is your redemption right in Christ mm. to confess mm. your sin and to have forgiveness for your sin. Now, back to the question Brother Obona said. If you look at alive in Christ, in his death, in his burial, in his mm. resurrection, mm. then in his ascension mm. and in, in his inheritance, Every time we do water baptism, I'm not talking about sprinkling. Immersion. When we do water baptism by immersion, immersion, when you are put under the water, you are identifying with the death of it Jesus death. Christ. Yes, sir. You are yes. identifying with his burial. Yes, sir. When we bring you up, you Resurrect. identify with his resurrection. Resurrection. Now, the life of Jesus did not stop in resurrection. He move on to a section. Station. And like Brother Akin said, while you are here on earth, you will not be at, you will not be caught up to heaven, heaven. ascending physically, but positionally. Oh. That's why you need to understand positional righteousness, positional inheritance, and experiential righteousness, yeah. experiential inheritance, experiential ascension, positional ascension. Positionally in Christ, in Christ, Christ. you are seated in heavenly right places, far right above principalities and power. You have ascended now. Experientially, you can come into vision and revelation of Jesus Christ where you are caught up into heaven. Second mm. Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Apostle Paul said, It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. He said, mm. For I will come into visions and revelations of the Lord. Then he said in verse 2, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Go? Whether in body, I cannot I tell. Know. Whether out of body, I cannot tell. God knew it. Such a one was caught up ascension yeah. into the third heaven. And I knew such a man, verse 3, whether in the body or out of the body. So as you walk with the Lord, as you grow and increase in your walk with him, you can begin to experience intermingled yeah. aspects of where you are caught up to heaven. Never. There are people who have walked up to with God so much. And I tell you, a living example is Professor Sadu. Apart from Professor Sadu, there used to be another, Professor Sadu is called Sadu, Sunda Sadu Zavaraji. Uh, uh, There's another Sadu before him. Sadu Zing, they call him the apostle of the bleeding feet. This man will come into revelation. He will be caught up to heaven. Disappear on planet Earth. I'm not telling you story. Disappear. Physically disappeared. Caught up to heaven. Come back on Earth. So people who have not walked up to the, that level of revelation with God, you say it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, while I was pastor in Nigeria, the man of God that I walked with, he told me of a man of God in Nigeria, an aged man that he said, that man has worked with God so much that when you and him, you are trekking on the road, you can't catch up with him. And the man is over 70. He said, the man walk as if his, his wind. Yes, yes. He yes, will walk yes. as if his wind. You can't catch up with him. Even you, you are younger than him. And the man is aged. And he said, suddenly the man, will, he, will, he will be transported by the spirit. Yes. In the days when there is no vehicle, he has a crusade 
He will get there way. before everybody. He, he would disappear. Okay, that was, a, that was a story that late Apostle Ayo Babalola, he was yes. going to have a crusade and his wife locked him in the room and told him he's not going to preach. Mm -hmm. And people were on the crusade ground waiting yes. for him. And he said to the Lord Jesus, and if the man does not want to beat his wife, I know that there's some pastor in our day, they will have finished the woman with some baptism. And he told the Lord Jesus, Lord, what, what, what will I do? The Lord said unto him, put your back on the wall. I will transport you to the crusade ground. He put his back on the wall. He found himself on the pulpit. He preached. And when he finished, the Holy Ghost brought him back into the house. The wife did not know that the man had gone to preach and come back. He still found him where he was. Mm -hmm. He's a realm. May we get there, Bra Obona. So the inheritance, yeah. Jesus said, all that the Father has given unto me, I have given unto you. This is where we share in his inheritance. But these things are not something that happen easily. We have to work there. We have to develop relationship so that we cannot begin to experientially, positionally, it is true. Experientially, not many people will experience it before Christ comes. To experience this, you have to enter and step into deeper waters of the spirit, deeper consecration, deeper holiness, so that we can be, experiencing this reality of this dimension and i look forward that before jesus come some of us will walk in that reality mm -hmm. uh, because i believe that as we grow fonder of him loving him the more and he's ripping up the flesh all these little little things that is hindering us before you know it you will see yourself being transported from your house to go and do miracle in london and you come back and your cousin will just call you, oh, Brother Bona, thank you for uh, when you came to London in uh, October. Thank you. The prayer you prayed for me. Uh, I, I was After that prayer, I was completely ill. And you wonder, London in October, when did I go to London in October? But what you don't know is that you have been transported in the middle of the night while you are praying. Your body, your spirit is performing healing. And the people are literally seeing physically, not in the spirit. Physically, they will see you. Amen. 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 Pastor B. Yeah. So Amen. those are rents. Yes, I'll break it. Permit me to read something to 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 let me, me to read Acts, book of Acts 8. Yes, sir. Book of Acts 8. I'll read I'll start reading from verse 34. This is the story of the Enoch and Philip. But verse 34. Acts 8, verse 34. It says the Enoch asked Philip, tell me what tell me, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this same scripture, Philip mm -hmm. told him the good news about Jesus. 36. As he rode along, they came to some water, and the Enoch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Verse 39. When he came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. Mercy. The Enoch never saw him again, but mm -hmm. went on. It will uh -huh. rejoicing. Meanwhile, meanwhile, verse 40, mm -hmm. Philip found himself further north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way he came to see Amen. You see teleportation. Amen. It's in the Bible. I'm not making it up. Amen. Amen. So it's a reality. So we, reality. We, we'll get there. Amen. 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 There, 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 there are mysteries that we don't understand. We, we don't understand, no honestly. Understand. Thank you, Brother Amos. All right, Black, over to you. Yeah, so going back to our conclusion. So to have victory over sin, you must reckon your body as right, dead. Brother, can I, can I yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. So I just want to say uh, why we need to constantly pray for forgiveness, mm. even as Christians, mm. is because as we begin to, as we begin to walk with God, mm. God will, as we move closer to him, God will put us at the higher standard. Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. For example, if we look at uh, Moses when he was bringing the Israelites to uh, out of Egypt to the came mm -hmm. to the Promised Land, they got to to the mountain, and he mm -hmm. said, "Speak to the mountain," mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Moses struck the mountain, mm -hmm. and God counted that as a sin. S sin. Mm. Mm -hmm. And because of that, God said, "I will not. You will not bring the Israelites." To the promised land. The promised yes, land. So if we are lucky, the Holy mm. Spirit sometimes will tell us it's not as we begin, we, 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 we have gone past, we are committing fornication, we are committing mm -hmm. adultery, we are mm -hmm. lying, and all those things. Mm -hmm. And we do some things sometimes that will make God angry. This is not that mm. we are lying, we are committing fornication, yes, we have gone yes, through yes. that. We have gone through that. Yes. But if yes. we are lucky, the Holy Spirit will tell you this thing that you have done is wrong. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we continue, we will begin to pray for forgiveness. 
if we mm. are if we are not lucky sometimes god can punish us because of that thing yes sir if we look at for example lucky night 8 that mm. transformed everything and when after lucky night 8 pastor he was walking and he was thinking oh, god thank you for i mean look at what you have you have done to me and god said, if you ever <laughs> if you ever think that this thing happened because of you mm. he started praying for forgiveness Mm. If if God did not tell him, we we'll just think, ah, see, God, you have used me. Um, mm. see what you have done, and he says, sin. God will count it as a right, sin. Right, yeah, right. Yes, sir. Right. So as we begin to, as we begin, see, look at uh, uh, um, um, Mariam. Mariam. Mm. Yeah. He mm. said, okay, why did you go and marry the woman they said we should not marry? Mm-hmm. He was struck with leprosy. That one is more than I've committed mm. adultery. I've committed uh, mm-hmm. fornication. Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. another standard? So as we begin to move in the things of the Lord, that's mm. we need to constantly pray for forgiveness because mm. little things can you can look at someone and say, ah, "Why is this person wearing this kind of thing?" God can count that as a sin. And mm. If you are lucky, the Holy Spirit will tell because the Bible the Holy Spirit convict us of sin. But if you are mm. not lucky, the Holy Spirit might not tell you, and God can count that as sin. So that is why we as Christians, as we begin to grow, we have to constantly pray for forgiveness because you don't know. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Just to to um, buttress, I just want to bring us to remembrance of Moses. Mo- Moses. Moses was called by God. If you remember, he was doing the work of. We went to confront Pharaoh and everything. This same Moses that God was talking to in the burning bush. If you remember, at one point God said, "I'm going to kill him." Mm. If you can, you remember? Mm. God was going to kill him. Why? Because he forgot to circumcise his son. Mm. The same God that was that called him in the burning bush, sent him to Pharaoh to deliver the people of Israel. God, I, all I, that thing, in fact, it shocked me in the Bible. I'm like, ah, what is this? Mm. God said, I'm going to kill him. You know, so you can you can imagine, you know, uh, if God God was ready to waste Moses completely because of the mistake, one mistake, error, he forgot to circumcise his son. But thankfully, Zipporah was there. She immediately recognized the error and immediately circumcised the boy, thereby stealing the wrath of God. So like mm-hmm. Brother Kule is saying, <laughs> we need to be very, very careful. I mean, God holds us to different you know, standards. And we need to be very... And, and also, Brother, I, I yes, want to say something, Brother Kule, uh, Thank you for bringing that. Because like you rightly said, you use the word lucky. I pray that we will be more than lucky for God to tell you that you have sinned. <laughs> yes, sir. Because yes. if he did not tell you you have sinned, He'll kill you. you see, Amen. the Bible said there are some Amen. people, he said their iniquity is going before them. Mm. He said some people in the book of Timothy said their, their iniquity is coming behind them. Behind them. I only said to myself, those that their iniquity is going before them is good though. Because mm. maybe your eyes will open and say, ah! Ah, this is sin. You repent. Forgive, forgive. The one that your iniquity is coming behind you, you think, oh, I've made it, I'm righteous. And then you get before the throne and the iniquity appear and you are cut off. Think of somebody like um, Saul. Mm. God just decided, I'm, mm. I'm not going to forgive you. Yeah. Think of somebody like Eli. God mm. said to Eli, when he was talking to, to Samuel, he said, the iniquity of <laughs> Black Black, and this one scared me. He yes, said, sir. the iniquity of Eli and his household so, shall not be atoned for, for either yeah. by sacrifice or by offering. God said, Eli, if you bring sacrifice, I will not I collect. Will accept it. Mm. Bring mm. offering, I will not collect. Confess your sin, I will not, I will I will not, not forgive you. You can imagine that it is, so if, if you are able to constantly forgive, and Bracule said, it is we that we calibrate sin to be fornication mm. and adultery. Look at those little things. He told Moses, <laughs> I said, speak. You, sm- you smoke the rock. And you know what Moses did? Moses said to the people, shall we bring r- water, water for you out of this rock? God said unto Moses, eh? Ah. When did we become mates? Because ah. you are demonstrating my power. You now say, shall we? We, Moses, we. You see, this is the reason that Jesus is the best of them all. Moses mm. said, shall we? Mm. That word, shall we, is the Equals. sin of equality. Equation. And that sin is still affecting everybody. Mm. Who are you? I'm a man. I'm a pastor. What do you think you are doing? I can preach the way you are preaching. The moment the sin of equality comes in, 
Mm. There is a leprosy and we bring judgment on ourselves. God said, Moses, when did we become mates? Mate. I mm. told you speak. You smote and you are still telling. And go and read the Brackley like Riley said. God said to Moses, Moses begged God 10 times. Go say, God, forgive me. This is you. When God said you will not enter the promised land. And you know what God said unto Moses? He said, you did not sanctify me before the people. Mm. You did not sanctify me before the people. You Error. equate yourself. Error. And that is Error. why the Bible said, let this man be a you that was in Christ Jesus, who was equal with God, but did not make himself to be Self. equal with God. So if yeah. Jesus, the son of God, will not make himself equal, who was Moses to be saying to the people, shall we? Mm. God said, when did I become your mate? And we also find the same sin in the family. Mm. When the wife will say to the husband, well, you walk, I walk. My we are money. the same thing. No, <laughs> it's a sin of equality. We are not the same thing. If there's going to be peace, even in the church, in leadership, you might you might be able to speak fire and brimstone than your pastor. Don't enter into that error. It's a ministerial okay. error. It's a kingdom error for you to equate. We cannot equate. When, if, if God tomorrow will take my little joy, Jemima, and said he's the pastor in charge of Jesus out Silicon Valley, every one of us must honor her. We must yes. respect her. We can't say, oh, my name is not not be Can my Ben lay you know who I am. You know who I am. You, you can't say that. Because those things bring error upon us. So let's be careful, like Dr. Kone said. So that, and this is the reason that every day, I love what Daddy Gio said in 2013 at the Holy Ghost Convention in Dallas. Daddy Gio said every day when he wakes up, before he asks God for anything, he spends one hour mm. asking God for mercy. I say, eh, mm. Daddy Gio, mm. one hour mm. for mercy. Mm. I need to spend six if that year is mm. one, ah. <laughs> my own for six hour now. Yes, because you can imagine nobody like that you at that level is still asking mercy, mercy, oh, mercy. Uh, mercy. So every day now, me, I make sure my own is two hours or six hours. Father, shalom, <laughs> shalom, 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 shalom. <laughs> so okay, over to you. Amen, sir. Yes, as I was saying, you know, to have victory over sin, you must reckon your body as dead to sin, declare the finished works of Christ in your life, and walk in his power, freedom, and liberty. Amen. Galatians 5 1 says, Stand fast in Christ's liberty and don't be entangled again with sin, with the bondage or with the yoke of bondage. And then it says to move on to practical Christian living and victorious Christian living by not yielding to your flesh. How do we do that? How do we move on, move on to practical Christian living? Now, the, the way it works for me, or as I have lived, as I've come to realize, is that. Um, in Acts 24, 16, Acts 24, 16, it says, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. And then Romans 2, 15 says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness Amen. and their thoughts, the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. Basically for me, you know, the word of the, of, of the law, you know, is written on my heart. In the, I, and I'm sure it's written in your heart as well and in the inward consciousness. You know, the, the approval and disapproval device. This is basically the spirit. The spirit of, the, the spirit of God in, in us is also a seat of conscience. That is the judge within. Amen. Am I making sense? Yep. Am I making sense? Yep. So, you see, the, the word of the law is written in our hearts. Amen. Amen. And in our inward consciousness, the approval and disapproval device engraved in our heart that is in the spirit of man. So when man conflicts with what is good and lawful, he receives an internally generated condemnation. Am I making sense? Yeah. You know, uh, and, you know, for when we are rebuked for guilt and, we, or, you know, that's when we are rebuked for guilt. But when we are right, we receive a lot of, of, of commendation. That is the spirit will commend us for doing something mm -hmm. good. So from the time of new birth, you know, one realizes that one has a conscience that has become our safeguard, safeguard, and yep. the voice of the recreated spirit. That still small voice that speaks in you, you know, amen. I hope I'm making sense, you know. Yep. To, to, so, you know, the, the, we realize that God's spirit in us, you know, is the candle of God, amen. And I pray yep. that uh, the Lord has tonight through this study um, okay. damaged our ignorance and that, um, you know, we will, we will be free from sin. We are, at least we have seen four, four uh, secrets to, to, to being free from sin. And I'll recap just for the sake of it. 
the first one is your identity in Christ. We have to realize our identity in Christ. Then we have to realize who we are. That's the second thing. Mm. The third is we are we are to die to sin. We have to be dead to sin. And the final one is we are to be alive in Christ. Amen. We mm. have quick three quick prayer points, and we'll, I'll hand over back to Pastor Bayo. Amen. 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 Let let us pray like this. I declare that the blood of Jesus has set me free. Let us I pray. Declare that the blood of Jesus has set, set me free in the name of Jesus. I declare I'm that the free by the blood. I'm clean by the blood in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has made me free. The law of life of Christ Jesus makes me free from sin and death. From in Jesus' mighty born. name, we are praying. Amen. 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 I declare that by His Spirit, I have dominion over sin. Amen. I Turn it into prayer. I, I declare, declare that by his spirit, I have, I have dominion over sin. I have power I have over sin. I have the ability to not to sin anymore in the name of Jesus. I'm victorious in the name of Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Amen. Jesus, and the last one I live above the flesh. Through the spirit of grace, in the name Amen. of Jesus, I live, I above, live the above, above the flesh. The spirit of grace, in the name of Jesus, Masco bre indra bada 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 bala boshka da bada. Li endra benes to brene brano ziklebre. I live above the flesh. Through the spirit of grace, in the, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Amen. Heavenly Father, our King, our God, we give you all the honor, we give you all the yes, glory, Lord. we give you all the adoration. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank we you, thank Father. you for your word that you have sent forth. Father, we pray, Lord, that as a result of your word tonight, Father, Lord, deliver us from sin in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, give, give, give us the ability, Lord, to walk circumspect, mm. oh Lord, in your love and in your faith, oh Lord. Mm. Heavenly Father, my King and my God, I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you open the eyes of our understanding to realize Amen. our inheritance in you, O oh Lord, and, 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 and the fact that you have broken us free from sin in Amen. the name of you. Amen. Heavenly Father, my King and my God, I pray that, that you write our names Amen. permanently in, in your Lamb's Book of Life, the names of our loved ones and our families in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, deliver us from the power of Amen. sin. Heavenly Father, to you be the honor, the glory, and the adoration. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 You, Pastor, Amen. Thank you, Brother King. Shall we, let's, let's admit ourselves and celebrate Jesus and celebrate Brother King uh, for this thank teaching. Uh, thank you so much. Let, let me quickly say this. Um, I know that some of you are still wondering, how can I still be in this flesh and say that I am a saint? And I want to bracket you, you quoted a scripture earlier on, Hebrews mm. chapter 11, verse 6, six. that six. without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that is a rewarder of them oh, that yeah. diligently he seek him. Now I want to throw a question to you or say something. Many of you, when you are sick, you don't say that you are sick. What do you say you are? You are? Mm. Strong. You say you are well. Strong. Healed. You are strong. strong. Well. Why are you saying you are strong? But you are sick. Mm. But you say you are strong. You are strong, yeah. <laughs> now the Bible says, whose report will you believe? Yes. We shall believe the report yes. of the Lord. But yes. when you are sick, you say you are strong. And the Bible says, let the weak say I am what? Strong. I am strong. Let the poor say I am what? I am rich. So rich. You, you believe that you are rich when you are poor. You believe you are well yeah, yeah. when, when, you, when are you are sick. But you don't believe you are a saint when you are still a sinner. You are a saint with a sinner problem. You are not a sinning saint. Oh, you don't me. catch what I'm saying. <laughs> Why are you still living in your flesh? You are a saint. Not hey. because of... You are a saint by what the blood has done for you. You are declared mm. saint. Mm. Yet, so you believe that you are, you are rich by faith. You believe you are strong by faith, but you don't believe that you are a saint by faith. So the same spirit of faith that makes you believe that I am healed when I am sick, that makes me say I am strong when I am weak, is the same spirit of faith that is saying that while I still live in this flesh, even though I still have struggle with sin, I, the blood of Jesus declares me as same. So I walk in the consciousness of those reality, three realms of reality, and walk towards that. As I press the word that, you keep saying, I am well, I am healed, I am strong. And suddenly you find that you are well. You keep saying, I am rich, I am rich. And suddenly you find yourself walking out of poverty. Then you have to keep saying that I am a saint, I am a saint, until you find yourself living 
and practicing and living like a saint. You don't need to mm -hmm. die like Mother Teresa of Calcutta before we we uh, we ordain you or what we say, canonize you. Yeah, that's the word as a saint. So in this house, we have saints living here, Amen. and I trust that we continue to be stronger in righteousness, in Amen. holiness, and Amen. we will get to that realm of ascension, inheritance in Amen. the name of Jesus. Thank wow. you so much, everybody. God bless you. We appreciate you. All the ministering team will be having our meeting on Saturday by 6 p.m. Please put that in mind. Don't forget that. And on Sunday, we'll be meeting on this platform. Thank you for your giving. You want to give, go ahead, Sister Bissi, you can put that on our platform. You want to give your offering, your tithes, your... Or also support us on Shepherd's Care. Just do the dollar sign cash app. Uh, on the on cash app is the dollar sign uh, uh, Shepherd's Care. And that, that, uh, the, whatever you give, nothing is too small. Uh, $20, $30, $50, $100, go this long way. Uh, as God is opening more, 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 more rooms for us. And the Lord will bless you abundantly, abundantly in Jesus' name. Don't forget the church. We are coming back first Sunday in december so start preparing yourself start asking god what he wanted to do to support the work as we go back to open gradually not massively and the lord will help us in jesus name shall we share the grace together tonight everybody want to go may the grace of our lord jesus christ submit yourself and let's share the grace the love of god, love of god. and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit, the holy spirit. be with us now be forever us now. more forever more amen, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now, when I say unmute yourself and you don't unmute yourself, that's a sin. You have just sinned. And you have to repent right now. Forgive. That, that's a sin. That's a sin. You see now, some of you, you did not unmute. You have just, that's what Brakule was saying. So you are thinking that it's only fornication. I say unmute. You did not unmute. That is rebellion. <laughs> that is a sin. Error. But just commit a sin. But I just finished talking Error. about victory over sin. You just committed one before we, we before we even finish. <laughs> just commit a sin. Confess right now. Repent. Mercy, Mercy. Mercy. mommy. Mercy. Thank you. Uh, because some of you, even that's why the fact that I'm saying it, you are still yeah. not yeah. unmuting yeah. yourself. I'm looking at you in the chat. They are sleeping, sir. They are sleeping. Forgive yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Some of you, you are even sleeping. And the disciple of Jesus, he took them to the Garden of Gethsemane, and they were sleeping. And Jesus said, and you are, and he met them, they were sleeping. And that was okay. another sin to the disciple. Yes, sir. So when you sleep in the church, it's a sin. Yeah. When you sleep in Bible study, is a sin. When you don't meet yourself, it's a sin. Little, little We're thing. in a nosy area, sir. Pastor. Okay, except you're, okay, if you're in a nosy area, just say, oh, me too, I'm in a nosy area, and then we know that you're <laughs> just the country. Forgive. Father, we thank you tonight, Amen. and we know that our sin is forgiven, and we are victorious. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, beloved. Yes, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for the Bible study. Thank you, Brake. Thank, Thank you, everybody you, who have contributed. God bless you. God bless you. Have God a wonderful, you wonderful, tonight, glorious everybody. night in Jesus' you, name. Sir. Shalom. Good I see you on Sunday Good by day. the grace of God. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night, Good night mommy. God bless Good you. Night. Good night. Thank Good you so much. Good night, everybody. God bless Good you. Shalom. Good night. Good night.